than I thought, but it's so good to be with you. I'm going to be talking today about personal capacity, personal capacity. Uh, I've written a couple books on capacity, and uh, this one here is Increasing Your Personal Capacity, and this one here is Hope is Rising. This is a newer book that, uh, that I've written, that our team has written, and uh, you know, there's, there's hundreds of laws that are affecting you and I. Now, how many of you know that old saying, ignorance of the law is no excuse? Just because we don't realize something. I, I remember back a while back, I, I had purchased a ticket to go somewhere, and I was complaining because the airline ticket costs so much. And, uh, and by, by, for my flight and Tammy's flight, and my friend Mark Carpenter, who you know Mark, Mark says, well, why didn't you buy a companion ticket? The second ticket would have been free. I go, what are you talking about? And he said, well, reach in your wallet. And I pulled out my wallet and he goes, there, that Alaska Airlines card, that one, yeah. It, every year it comes with a free uh, companion ticket. Now, how many of you know I was ignorant of something that was afforded to me it was in my wallet the entire time, and I paid out $1,200 that I did not have to pay out because I had not taken. Now, how many of you know the next opportunity that came around, I used that ticket? Now, now, every year I make sure, because if you don't use that ticket, it expires. If I told you that many of the blessings of God that are coming your way, you're unaware of them and they, they expire, meaning what? They just go right on by. They just, they just go right on by in life, and you're just like, I am unaware. And many of these laws. Now, I got on this flight out of Ontario, California on Friday. There was a, a law that was in effect, in effect the entire flight. It's called the law of lift and thrust. Law of lift and thrust. It, it just amazes me how this plane with, with several hundred people and all the luggage I mean, it weighs literally hundreds of thousands of pounds, and that thing can lift off of a runway and carry you safely to your destination. But I can tell you this, if a plane violates the law of lift and thrust, it's going to crash. It's gonna have a problem. There is a law that is affect, there are several laws that are affecting you and I today that uh, I, have, I have become aware of, that I, that I have experienced in my life, and we, many of God's people are unaware of it. And it's called the law of capacity, the law of capacity. It's all through the word of God. There's two principles that I talk about in this book, the law of capacity and the law of hard, hard. The law of hard is simply whatever you find hard in life will ultimately define your life. It's all through your Bible. John chapter six, verse 66, the disciples say to Jesus. Now this is, this is the chapter where more than, more than 500 disciples left Jesus at one time. 500. The biggest exodus of ministry that happened in the Bible was during John 666. And I, it's not a, it's, 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 I don't think it's an accident that the address of it is John 666. But here's what it says. Jesus is teaching them about the kingdom of God and what's coming next. And this is what they say. It's too, Jesus, what you're teaching is too hard for us to accept. Anytime the word of God comes your way and it's too hard for you to accept, there's a chance of you exiting or giving up on a potential promise of the word of God. So there's, two, there's a principle called the law of capacity. And here's what happens. If you violate, just like the law of lift and thrust, if you violate the law of lift and thrust, it's gonna cost you. If you violate the law of capacity, it's gonna cost you your personal, your personal effectiveness and your personal, uh, so, so whether you realize it or not, the law of capacity is affecting each and every one of us today. And here's how it affects us in two areas of our life. Our personal effectiveness. Have you ever looked in the mirror? I've done this many years ago as I was a young youth pastor and I was young in ministry. I would look in the mirror and I would think to myself, Eddie, why is it? You know what, it, you know what it's like when you take that really good assessment, you're looking deep down into your own eyes in the mirror and you, and you have a reality check with yourself. Why is it this person seems to be prospering? This person seems to be getting more opportunity. This person seems to be, the peop, these different people seem to be having these incredible breaks, and you're like, I, I know I preach as good as they do. I know that I'm doing my business as good as they are. I know, I, in fact, 
I think I might be a little better at business than they are in some areas. I mean, I'm, you're looking at it, and you wanted to say, well, there's, there's got to be a reason. It's called the law of capacity, and I'm going to talk about that for a few moments. So, so it's my personal effectiveness is being affected by, so how effective we are in life is tied to the law of capacity. The second is, is the prayers we're praying. The prayers we're praying. How many of you are praying people? Is this a praying church? Do we pray? Have you ever wondered why? I should say this. Why it seems that certain people have more of their prayers answered than other people? If we're awake, if we're alert, we, we, we look and go, why does it seem that other people are getting more prayers answered? I can tell you this, my wife seems to get more prayers answered than I get answered. I mean, I'm just, I'm just telling you, that's what it seems to be. So let's dive into the Word of God. How many of you know it's good to bring the Word of God into this? So if you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 25, verse 14. As I said, this is all through our Bibles. We could pull up many scriptures on this. I'm going to use this as our text today. Verse 4, for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered to them his goods. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to their own ability. Then he who had received five talents went and traded them and made another five talents. Then he who had received two talents went and traded them and made another two talents. But he who had received one talent went and dug a hole in the ground and hid his Lord's talent. So why would the Lord give different amounts of talents to different people? Let's say I, I came in here this morning and let's say I, I pulled up my wallet today and I pulled out a $100 bill. I had a $20 bill and I had a $1 bill. And I, and I come up here and the first thing I do is I, I go up to... I go up to past, uh, uh, Dr. Paul and I hand him a, a, a $100 bill. And then I give Jordan, Pastor Jordan, I give him a, a $20 bill. And then I give to my brother over here, I give him a $1 bill. And I give no explanation. You're watching this and you're like, okay, so Eddie's giving away money this morning. And you're going, well, there's some kind of favoritism here. He's known Paul for 25 years. He took him on his jet ski yesterday. Uh, you know, the, yeah, I can see why it's a sweetheart insider, insider deal here. And, and, and Jordan, you know, he, you know, he knew Jordan when Jordan was just this little pup, you know, real young. And, you know, and so, yeah, so there's a little something there. But, but this guy over here, I've never seen this guy before. I mean, you know, other, other than uh, he's got some muscles, but, um, you know, and you're going to think there's something going on. If you don't have the inside information, you're going to wonder what is happening here. Well, the same is true here. If Jesus rolled into the service today and he's given out, he's given out these resources to people and he gives out a, 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 a resource here but, and it's less to this person and less to this person, you're like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Why did that person get more resource than I got, Jesus? And at first glance, you wonder, is there some kind of discrimination? Is there some kind of favoritism going on? You can't, you can't help but wonder from time to time when you're in church and you're praying and you're seeing God, it seemingly God is blessing this person and God is not blessing this person. Or, or I'll say it like this, these people seem to get their prayers answered, but my prayers seem to go unanswered. We, you gotta wonder at times, is there some kind of something going on that I don't know what's going on? Yeah. Is there favoritism, is there discrimination? Well, does our Lord discriminate? No. Does he show favoritism? No. Then there must be an example in the word of God. Then there must be an example. And our answer is found in verse 15. Verse 15. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to their own ability. I want you to grab those words. To each according to their own ability. Servant number one had an ability of five, so the Lord matched. Everyone say matched. The Lord matched his ability of five with a resource of five. Servant number two had an ability of two, so the Lord matched. Everybody say matched. Match the resource of two with the uh, ability of two with the resource of two. Servant number three had an ability of one, so the Lord matched his ability of one with a resource of one. So there was no discrimination that day. There was no favoritism that day. The, the Lord of those servants just simply identified, here's the key word, I want you to grab this word, pre-existing ability. 
That day when the Lord, rolled, the Lord of those servants, when he rolled in with those servants, he just simply identified in the room pre-existing ability and he matched it with resource. I, I remember the day that my, my, my mind became aware of this concept. And I began to realize that the, I've been pastoring 42 years. I began to realize that the size of my ministry was not being defined by God. God said, go out and win the lost. The size of the ministry was being defined by my capacity. I, I began to realize that, that, uh, that many of the prayers that I was praying was, was being affected by my personal capacity. The success that we have in life is being, de- is being affected by our personal capacity. The quality of our marriage is not determined by our spouse. The quality of our marriage is being determined by our personal capacity. The quality of our life is not limited by your sex, your gender, your skin color, your ethnic origin, your financial status, your geographic location. Ultimately, the quality of your life is being determined by your personal capacity. Now there's two things that I wanna talk about this morning. In, in, in these books, I talk about dozens of areas, but I wanna talk about two this morning for a moment that, that really affect our personal capacity. Uh, one is, two things. One is that every one of us have a personal capacity. So what I'm talking about this morning affects every single person in this room. We have a personal capacity. And the number two is, everything God gives us in life has the ability to increase. Everything God brings into your life is in seed form. And it's up to us to steward over it, to have it blossom and, 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 uh, and, and produce in our lives. Now, I'm a real analytical preacher. I have been doing this my entire life. I am a sixth generation pastor. My family generations, all we do is the word of God 365 days out of the year. I have memorized several thousand scriptures, all in the New King James Version. So, uh, so if I might be preaching out of the New Living today, but I'll quote scripture out of the New King James. But because I've just memorized tons of scripture, I love to break the word of God down. I love to look at it from every angle. I like to see in it what is the practical steps we can take to get the results. Because here's what I've discovered. When we work the word, the word works. I'm serious. When you work the word, the word works. Hope is rising. In this book, it's going to talk about my wife, Tammy. She's had stage four cancer twice in her life. She had Hodgkin's disease lymphoma fourth stage. Uh, it, when they discovered it, it had already traveled through her lymph node system. It was all through her stomach. She was cut open from from top to bottom. They took out as much of her intestines and colon and everything that wasn't uh, needed for her to live and gave her a 10% chance of living. We had to isolate her, not from disease, we had to isolate her from people. Because everybody was starting to say, well, you know what, you've lived a good life. No, you no, God didn't put you on this earth to live a good life, he, a, a full life. And we worked the word. And when the doctor said, I can't explain it, they wrote her up in a medical journal at, uh, at St. Peter's Hospital in, in uh, Olympia, Washington. It's in, she's in the journal there. And it says she's the only survivor of, her, of, of Hodgkin's disease lymphoma fourth stage in, with, the, with the old style treatment where she had 88 uh, full body radiation treatments. And they said, we can't explain it. We can't explain it. And then at the very end, it says this. Oh, they said this, you will never have children. Well, we just happen to have two babies and five grandchildren. Come on, somebody. And we worked the word. We worked the word. We isolated her and saturated her with the word of God. We worked the word. 13 years ago, she had herthal cell cancer. And at the City of Hope, which is the, which is the premier cancer research hospital on the whole west coast of America. In the history of the city of hope, she's the only survivor of herthal cell cancer once it's in two tumors. It's in, because there's no cure for it. 
Every year they go back there. In fact, this week we'll be there. This uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, thir- Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, they're gonna do all this test because they test her every year. And they said, in, in over 2,000 people that have had Herthel cell cancer, she is the only survivor of it. And, and they scratch their head. But here's my point. When you work the word, the word works. When you work the word. So in every area of your life, work the word. You're gonna have to overcome your natural mind that says, oh, people, I can't explain it, but people, no, no, work the word. Work the word. So we work the word. So here's, here's what I'm getting to. When it comes to the, uh, the, the area of potential or for personal capacity, I've, I have identified, and I know this freaks out some Christians, so you're gonna be like, that doesn't sound spiritual. How many of you know there is natural and spiritual, and they've gotta work, in, they gotta work together. Right. They gotta work together, and sometimes we're just, we're spiritual geniuses, and we're, we're earthly fools. I was gonna say something else, but it's not politically correct. But we're just dumb. We're dumb naturally, and we, 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 we pride ourselves on being really smart spiritually, but we had to be smart naturally and spiritually because they work hand in hand. Proverbs says it like this. He who does not by every means try to heal himself, that's natural, heal yourself. So Proverbs says this. He who does not by every means try to heal himself is the brother of him who commits suicide. Proverbs said that. If you don't try to heal yourself by every means, you're committing suicide. I know that's not popular in church because it's natural. But we've got to work natural to go along with supernatural. And when we put the two together, we get results. Come on, church. Half of you are loving this and half of you are waiting a while to decide. I get it, I get it, all right. I'll wait you out, I'll wait you out. So here's the formula, and I know, I know that sometimes believers have a hard time with the word formula when you're talking the word of God, but this is, this is the, okay, so let's don't use the word formula. Let's use the word, this is the, the steps that I see in the Bible that bring about success, and here they are. These are the steps I find in that story. My ability plus my resource plus my stewardship equals my personal capacity. My ability plus my resource plus my stewardship equals my personal capacity. Let me just show you this, here it is. Matthew 25, 15. That's where it gives the resource, the resource, and to one he gave, five talents to another two to another one so the resources were the talents that the lord gave your talents the talents that you have are a form of resource that god has brought into your life whatever talent that is obviously i have more talent on a ski do than see do than pastor paul i mean we we saw that on the video right Matthew chapter 25, verse 15 gives us the ability, the ability, because what did we say? My my ability plus my resource plus my stewardship equals my personal capacity. So the ability is 15b, to each according to their own ability, to each according to their own ability. And here's what I want you to make sure you grab. The ability were pre-existing in the service that day. Yes, the Lord of those servants, he came in that day and he gave out resource, but he gave out no ability. So whatever ability walked in the door, the resource just matched whatever walked in the door. I've never seen it one time in 42 years of church services, and I can tell you I have done a lot of church services. I have done a, I've done thousands. In fact, today's message is number 910 since I started Champion Life Church. So this would be 910. I probably, I've done thousands of messages. I've been in thousands of church services and I've never once, and I've been in some of the most miraculous healing services, but I've never seen it to where anyone's ability was doubled in a service. I've seen resources come into our lives. 
So then here's the, here's the stewardship. Where does stewardship play in? Matthew 25, 16 and 17. So then he who had received five talents went and traded them and made another five talents, and he who had received two did likewise. But he who had received one went and hid his talent in the ground. So then stewardship is what will you do with what God has given you? What will you do with what God has given you? Meaning what? We see from this example that our Lord takes takes his resource so serious that when a servant will not, will not apply the stewardship to the resource he's given you, he takes it from you and gives it to somebody who will. Why would he do that? Because we think this human experience is about our car and our ski and our, and our and our vacations and all this thing that we call life, but what Jesus and our God says is this human experience is about reaching people for the gospel. If you will get it into your DNA that your life, in whatever you're doing in life, if you will use it for the gospel, God, God will make sure he funds your ministry. He will fund your life. He'll fund your life if you're going to use it for the gospel. In whatever it is. In your corporate business, if you're on ski dues, it doesn't matter. If you, as long as you're using it for his purpose, he's gonna fund your life. So my, my ability plus my resource plus my stewardship will, will equal my personal capacity. I personally believe, this is my personal belief, that we are each given resources in life that match our ability. We're each given resources that match our ability. That's the principle that we see in the word of God. So let me, let me just give you a little example. Um, this is a, a glass, and then this is water. But how many of you can see that the glass and the water are not the same thing? The glass is my ability. We saw up here, uh, Dawn up here singing today, and I think, Dawn, man, you really hit the jackpot when you married her. I mean, she's got a great voice. Great worshipers. I love the fact that they led us into some free worship where we had the ability to just worship on our own. And nothing against churches that don't allow that, but, but sometimes it's nice where we get to lead our own worship from our own seat. I love that. Glass is ability. Singing. Uh, your corporate job you have. Guitar players. When you go to the work, that's your ability. Water is resource. How many of you can see that the water and the resource are not the same thing? This ability gives me the, it gives me the ability to apply stewardship to this resource. So, so, so what does that happen? What happens if you don't have the, have the, re- the um, ability? What if you have resource? What if, what if God walked in here today and he starts giving out resource, but you don't have ability? Jordan, stand up here. I mean, Reverend Andre, all right? Put your hand out there. If you, do you ever, both hands. Do you ever pray for a resource? Yeah. But what if God gave out resource and we don't have the ability to apply stewardship to it? Oh boy. Like he has this bright idea to say he's gonna invest in the stock market. <laughs> and, and he's like, God, give me money to invest in the stock market. But he doesn't have the ability to apply stewardship to what he's asking God for. And that's what many of our lives would look like. And can you imagine God saying, you know what? God, God is not going to waste resources. More, Lord, more. And we're like, God, pour in more. I'm a tither. I'm a giver. I'm generous. And God says, I'm not an idiot. <laughs> we see in Scripture that God only gave resource to match ability. So what ability do we have to retain what we're asking God for? Wow, you are so good at illustrations. Thank you (laughs) so much. What ability do we have to retain what we're asking God for? What is that? What what ability? Um, according According to scripture, in scripture, the resources came first. No, the ability was first, and God matched it with resource. And here, here's something that I, that I have found that I that I and I and I hesitate I it, I hesitate this at times saying this in church because this will tweak 
somebody for sure. Okay, so please hear me out. Because sometimes we're so heavenly minded, we're no earthly good. Meaning we have our, we're so, you know, God's going to do it. God, come through for me. And God's like, give me something to work with. How many of you are prayers? You're prayers. You believe in prayer. Now, don't, don't move, but in the back of your mind, you're wondering, why don't I get more prayers answered? Why don't I see more prayer answered? Here's my experience, my observation. Most of God's people are praying for increased resource when we should be praying for increased ability. We're praying for increased resource when we when if we really wanted to get our prayers answered, we'd be saying, God, how can I become, how can I become a greater container to, re- to retain what you want to pour into my life? Amen. So let's say, <clears throat> using that example, I just said there, Jordan's saying, I want to I invest in the stock market. God, give me resource. And he's praying for resources to invest in the stock market. What he should be praying for is, God, give me insight as I train myself and as I take classes to become, invest in the stock market. And once he increases his capacity in the area of knowledge for the stock market, watch God bring the resources. I believe when we increase our capacity, when we increase our ability, God is excited to say, I got something I can pour my blessings into and it's all through the word of God, and it's all through the word of God. When your abilities and your resources are given proper stewardship, an increased capacity naturally follows. Here's a couple things I want you to understand. God rewards productivity. We see that all through the word of God. Whenever we produce more in our abilities, God brings more resources into our lives. So many of the answers Many of the answers to the prayers we are praying right now at this time in our life, those answers are being affected by our personal capacity. What capacity do we have at this time in our life for God to answer those prayers? Like Jordan in there, using that example. What capacity did he have to retain and apply stewardship to the resource that I was pouring into his hand? So many of the prayers that we're praying, even in health, as I've said, my wife, stage four cancer, her cell cancer, the doctor would say, has said several times to her, the solution came through her. She literally said to the doctor, doctor, I've been doing research, and what about this? Doctor said, I've never heard of that. What about this? The doctor checked into it, the doc- and she said, and the doctor comes back to her and says, "We're going to try that." The re- because she increased her knowledge, she increased her ability. Then the answer, the prayer was answered. So many of the answers to the prayers we're praying at this time in our life are greatly affected by our personal capacity. How did this come about? I'll just give you an example. This was right around I don't know the year two thousand. 2001, something like that. I was, in a, I was preaching in a church downtown London, London, England. As Pastor uh, has mentioned, as, it's been, as we've said before, I lived in England for um, seven years full-time, traveled there a lot, spoke in hundreds of churches. As was my custom, I would pray for people at the end of service. I, w- I would preach and then I would say to people, if you'd like prayer for anything, come up and I'd love to pray with you because the Bible says if, if two of you shall agree as touching anything by my Father in heaven. And so we would anoint them with oil and we'd pray and we saw many, many wonderful miracles. But there was always this phenomenon that was happening that just was, made me scratch my head and, 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 and it wasn't in a good way scratching my head. Here's an example. I'm praying for, I'm, I, I preach I say, if anybody would like prayer, come up in the prayer line. This man comes up, he gets in the prayer line. He looked sharp. He, he looked very sharp. Um, I, said, I said, sir, what can I agree with you in prayer? He said, I'm believing for a top CEO management job 
that would be 120,000 sterling a year, which would be about 250,000 American dollars a year. Now, how many of you know that's a good job, 250,000 a year? Maybe not, maybe here you guys make more than that, but in California where I live, that would be a good job. He said, with benefits and, and all that goes with it, and, I, and he said, I just want you to pray with me. And he even had a verse. He quoted a verse that he was standing on. And then he said these words, I'm, I'm a tither in my church. He said, I'm an usher in my church. He quoted a verse. And it was like, it was like the perfect verse to say that God's going to bless because I've been faithful and da-da-da-da-da. It was like, a, it was perfect. This, this scenario is unraveling, or, or is coming down to like, all we need to do is agree in prayer. It's like he's already done all the work. And I'm thinking, and then I had a thought. You ever have a, a thought that messes up a perfectly good day? You ever have one of those thoughts? I had this thought. I said to him, the thought was, does he have the capacity? I hadn't written the book yet. I didn't even have this thought in my mind. I said, the, the, the Lord asked, I just felt the Lord put it on my heart. Ask him if, if he has the capacity to do the job. And I thought, that's odd. So I said, sir, what's your skills? What are your skills that are gonna, that are gonna set you up for this job? I know you're a tither, I know you're a giver, I know you're an usher in the church, I know that you, and he goes, well, I, what's your, I said, what's your management skills? He said, I don't have any. He said, I don't have any management skills. And I, and I, but then he goes, but, 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 but I'm a tither, I'm a giver, and he went into all these spiritual explanations. I said, where do you work now? And he said, I work down at a little con convenience store, a little, one of those little gas stations slash convenience stores. He said, I'm the checker there. And I said, I said, you don't, you're, you just, you want me to pray with you for this top CEO management job? I said, what capacity do you have to do this? And he goes, and he looked at me like, it's like he wanted to say, get behind me, Satan, like I was attacking his dream. You, you know what I'm saying? And, and I, I'm like, I'm conflicted in my mind as a pastor, and I can tell you this, as I pray for people in prayer lines all the time, I'm conflicted inside. And how many of you know, if you're supposed to come in agreement on something, it's not good when one of the parties is conflicted. My thought was, I, I, I prayed for him, I did pray for him, but my, in my spirit, in my heart, I'm like, God, I'm doing this, I'm traveling all over the world and I'm praying for your people, but, but something's wrong here. He's a good-hearted man, and how many of you know he has, he has, he, he wasn't like, like he was like down and out and he had no ability, he had the ability to run the, t the teller, the check, the ch checking out, and, but, but now, let me, I, always, I always say it like this. Let's say that this cup represented that man's capacity. This would be his capacity. And let's say that he, his capacity and his current ability. So he has the capacity to do more. I'm convinced the man could, had the capacity to do much more. But he had the current ability to run the, to be a checker. Now, he could, have, he could have taken some classes, some night classes to increase his ability. He could have read a book. He could have read my book, Increasing Your Personal Capacity, that I hadn't written yet. <laughs> the man inspired me to write the book. That man made me a lot of money. I, I, I sold 10,000 copies of that book in like the first three months it came out by that man's asking me to pray for him. He could have went to a night class. He could have done, can you understand? He could have done so much to increase his current ability, but he doesn't want me to do that. He wants me to simply lay my hands on him and God to violate all of God's natural laws and simply answer his prayer. What would it look like if God answered our prayers without considering our capacity? For that man to make 225 to 250 thousand dollars a year with his current ability to be like God saying, I'm gonna violate all my laws and I'm just gonna pour into that man. I'm gonna let that soak in for a moment. 
I love saying that. I was on an airplane, and I was, after that experience, I was on an airplane, and I was reading stories about people that had won the lottery. And I'm not talking about people that won like $2.50. They, they, they do $2 and they win $5. That's not what I'm talking about. Statistically, people that have won like $1 million, $5 million, $10 million, $20 million, big money. Statistically, they say that those people that win big money in the lottery, within five years, several things. They no, they don't just blow it, it's not just gone. That would be the best case scenario for some people. They actually, because they, they, they not only have their money, they go in debt, they buy expensive homes and stuff, so when the money's gone, they still have a lot of debt, and they, a lot of times they're losing their marriages. So how is it possible that you have somebody that's, let's say that they make, before, before they make, uh, before they win the lottery, they're, they're making, they work at Amazon, and they're, make, they're making $20 an hour, and they could do a lot of things to make more money, but they come along and we give them what, $10 million? They do not have the, everybody say capacity. They do not have the capacity and they do not have the ability to apply stewardship to what has been poured into their life. This, I, I, I just, I just I, my hope is that this will drop down into your spirit and as you leave this service today, you'll be thinking about your life. This should not be a bummer message for you where you think, oh, oh, that's what's been going wrong. It's more like this, oh, oh, that was a God idea that I do this, but no, I never learned anything about how to be successful in that. Oh, that was God's idea to do that, but I needed to do something as well to be prepared to apply stewardship to it. Well, but let's just say this. What if Bill Gates, what if he won the lottery? And what, let's say he won $500 million. How many of you would think that Elon Musk or Bill Gates, if they won, now my guess is they're not out buying lottery tickets. That's first of all. But let's say they did. They went down and they put down their $2 and they bought a lottery ticket and they won $250 million dollars. Statistically, they should lose all that money in the next five years. But how many of you know they probably would not? Why? The difference is capacity. The difference is capacity. I could take, if I had the time, there's about 20 messages in this series of capacity. And I've written about them in these books. Everything in your life is affected by capacity. Everything. Everything. I'm going to give you one example. I'll give you one or two examples, and I'm going I'm to bring this to an end. I'm gonna sign a few books, and then I'm gonna go catch an airplane, and I'm gonna to say to the storm, peace be still. Come on, somebody, and see, and see how far that gets me. Okay, come on. I just don't wanna be a Jonah, right? Come on, somebody. Prophecy. How many of you have ever had a, how many of you believe in prophecy? If you're like me, I have had hundreds of prophecies over my life. I'm a, I've been, I was raised in a pastor's home. My dad was a pastor 55 years. If there was a prophecy in the church, it seemed like somehow I would be sitting on the front row with my pastor when I was with my father when I was a child, and, and every traveling minister came through prophesied over me. I, 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 my family and I were, I'm, I'm, I've been like a magnet for prophecies. And many of God's people are like, why is it I get these prophecies over my life, but nothing seems to happen with them? Does that make the false prophet? No. It's called capacity. So let's use, let's use the story of David. David, this, the Samuel, goes to the house of Jesse to anoint the next king of the nation. Now, he is the premier prophet on the planet at that time. He is like the number one prophet on the planet. He, he, he prophesies that David will be the next king of the nation. So what, let's speculate for a moment. After the number one prophet of the, of the, of the, uh, on the planet, when he prophesies that you're gonna be the next king of the nation, what do you think happens next with David? Do you think they'll put a ring on his finger? 
Do you think they'll put a robe on his back? Do you think they'll, they'll take him straight to the, to the castle? What do you think happens next with David? Well, let's go forward in time from that event uh, well, we don't know if it's a year, year and a half, two years, but it's just a short time in the future. Could have been six months, could have, but we don't know, but we know it's in the future. First Samuel 17, verse 20. So David left the sheep with the keeper and left early in the morning to do as his father had instructed him. In the future, how is it possible that the leading prophet of the day says to David, you're going to be the next king of the nation, thus saith God, And we know it's a true prophecy because that's what happens. But in the meantime, everybody say meantime. In the meantime, he's back out watching sheep. It's like this. The, 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 it's called, if this, when the prophet spoke into David's life, he had the potential to be a king. He had the current ability to guard sheep. I I want this to get into your spirit. When the prophecy came into David's life, the prophecy spoke to his potential capacity, but he had the current ability to apply stewardship to some sheep. So what happens? That's how prophecy messes up good people. When, the, when, the, when a prophecy comes into your life or into the life of a church, it's speaking to your potential capacity. God's saying, this is what I've created you for. You have the potential to do this in the kingdom of God. You have the potential to do this in business. You have the potential to do this. But go back to what you're doing and apply stewardship. Get some training. What does he do? David, David goes back and he, and, he, and he guards the sheep. Then he kills a lion, and then he kills a bear, and then he kills a giant, and what happens? We have a fulfilled prophecy. What would have happened if David would have not went through that expansion of his capacity? I think we'd have read something very, very different. So that, that is one example. Here's another example. I told you every area of your life is affected by your personal capacity, the law of capacity. Tithing is tied to the law of capacity. And if I had time to teach this, this is a whole message all by itself. Two chapters in the book. Malachi 3.10, bring all the tithes into the storehouse and try me in this, says the Lord of hosts. How many of you believe the word of God? How many of you think the word of God is true? How many of you know Malachi 3.10 is true? Try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour, do we see an illustrated message coming here, pour out such a blessing on you, you'll not have room enough to receive it. You'll not have room enough to receive it. You'll not have room enough to receive it. Every time you give, every time the windows of heaven are open, is the Bible true? Every time you give, every time the windows of heaven are open, it pours out such a blessing you'll not have room enough to receive it. There's water all over the floor when we're done tithing in here on a Sunday morning. Because we tithe, but we don't have enough room to receive all the blessing that God's giving back into our life. What do you mean? So pastor, what does it look like? And and of course I don't have time because I got six minutes left in this service. It, it's in the way of all the, all the way that we lose money in life because we didn't have the capacity to retain it all. It's all the decisions we make that it weren't the best decision, but it was the best decision we knew of at the moment, but we did not have the capacity to know it was the best decision to retain all that God had poured into our life. The Bible says that we can have a return of a 30, 60, and, uh, and 100 fold. Do the math. I promise you, I doubt if a single person in this room, me included, has ever had a hundredfold return on our tithing. Meaning, here's, here's, the, here's my point. You can never outgrow God's ability to bring increase into your life. That's what Malachi 3.10 says. No matter how big a capacity you give, if Bill Gates was a tither today, that it's still, for him, God, can, God would still give more into his life than he has the ability to retain. That's what Malachi 3.10 says. Here's, here's, the, here's the best part of that verse. That every time we increase our capacity, God just pours more and more and more into our life. And what happens? We experience more. We have more of God's blessing. Um, I, I could show you every area of your life. Giving. 
uh, Luke 6.38, give and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. What are we left with? After God blesses us, what are we left with? According to scripture, whatever our capacity was. Whatever our capacity was. So that's what I'm gonna call that a message there. I'm gonna mention a couple things as I turn this back over to one of the Andres. Um, there's a concept in this book, I'll just mention it. I told you the law, of, the law of capacity and the law of hard. The law of hard is simply whatever we find hard in life will ultimately define our life. We are defined by what's hard in our life. If it, if it becomes, if you, if you tell a lie one time, are you defined as a liar? No, but if you continually lie, if it's too hard to tell the truth, you'll be defined as a liar. If, it's, if, it's too, if your marriage becomes too hard for you, you'll be defined as a divorcee. Whatever you find hard in life will ultimately define your life. The, the, the law of hard shows up in our lives, not as a lid. I, I know that like Maxwell teaches a lid. It's the lid of, on your life. And, and I believe that principle. But, the, but the, the threshold of hard is different. It, throws up, it shows up in a, in a, in a threshold, meaning, meaning this. Every area of your life has a threshold. This isn't the message. This is just as I'm going to walk out of here. Let's say that you're, in your marriage, you have a threshold of hard here. Let's say, because in your marriage, you have so much more capacity for your marriage, but there's so many hard places in your life. It, your morality has a hard threshold here. You just cannot stay off the internet in the middle of the night looking at pornography. So you have a, telling the truth has a hard threshold. Raising your children has a hard threshold. I, I, I always use this example. It's, it's kind of like a spring. If I had a spring in my hand, and I have, I'm just holding the spring there. And many of us, we make a run in life at, our, at that next, next level in our life, and that spring, as we pre- it's like life begins to compress right below that hard threshold. And it's like, I'm pressing, I'm really gonna, I'm gonna take my business to the next level, I'm gonna take my life to the next level, I'm gonna take my loss, my losing weight to the next level, I'm gonna take my marriage to the next level, and after a while, as we're pushing on that spring, eventually it, three things could happen. One, it, most people, it just drives us back. We make runs, we make these runs at the future and it drives us back. We make a run at the future, it drives us back. The second thing is we make a run at it, and this is what most of us do, or many of us do, we plan our escape. That spring, the same pressure trying to push that spring down is the same pressure that's trying to cause it to escape. And what do we do? That's why about every two years we're all changing jobs. We make a run at this new job, and then the pressure gets there because why? When we get there, guess who's there? We're there. So we go to that new job and the pressure is great. And what do we do? We plan our new escape. We plan a new escape to a new job. We plan an escape to a new marriage. We plan an escape to, but the Bible teaches, and this is the verses I bring out in this, and I just wish I had time to teach it. We can, having done all to stand, stand. The Bible teaches us that when we make that run at that next level in our lives, we can actually take a stand and through the principles of capacity, we can resist, and the same pressure trying to push us back is the same pressure trying to escape, is the same, everybody say same, Same. the same pressure that carries us to the next level. If we'll learn how to embrace the process and not blame it on the devil, but understand it's our responsibility to increase our capacity, it will actually become the catalyst that carries us to the next level. That's just a little side thought there. Thank you for that overwhelming response there. I'm gonna take that as you're shocked with me today. I'm not worried about how you think about this message because I'm gonna get on an airplane in an hour and 45 minutes. And then I'm gonna leave it to the Andres to clean up the mess, literally. <laughs> Here's my last point as I, as I walk off this stage. We have thresholds of heart. You don't have one threshold of hard. You probably have a hundred thresholds of hard. Every area of your life has a threshold of hard. And here's what I want you to understand. Your life is bleeding off at your thresholds of hard. 
you're like, man, I just, life, I just like, I just can't. Your life is bleeding off at thresholds of heart. So life is threshold there, and your morality, it's there. And here's the, here's, and if I had time to teach this, I just wish this was a double header. Because ultimately, it creates a new capacity for us. Isn't that what we saw in Matthew? That servant number three had an ability of one, so the Lord matched his ability with one with a resource of one. So that was his capacity. And what did the Lord do when he dug a hole and he hid the Lord's resource? The Lord took it away and he had a new capacity. Amen. And uh, if, you're, if you're interested, I only, brought, I only brought 20 books because it's just a proven statistic. Off, I get it. People, people don't read anymore. So, um, but I brought 20 copies of this, and it's ten dollars for this. And if you buy, they're ten dollars each. But if you buy both of them, it's fifteen dollars for both of them. Can we give God some praise for His Word today? Pastor Eddie, wow.